<laughs> no, not pathetic. Not an ick. I'm not an ick person. Pathetic is a path, but <laughs> it is. I think it is em- em- empathy. Mm-hmm. Em- empathy. Yeah, That's I think that sounds right. Um, here we get into the geeky meat of the uh, of okay. interview. A little bit more geek meat yes. here. Um, right. What geeky TV show or movie do you feel has had the greatest influence on you as a creator? Oh boy. Um... Uh, TV or movie or just any kind of anything that you'd like thing. Well, I, I, I think no matter what I want to like. Oh, I think uh, you know, well, I can't think of them. But um, I, I was gonna say like you know, Ghostbusters is my favorite movie. Always has been. Um, but Back to the Future, you know, there's there's so many things that that are so deeply woven into my you know filter of how I perceive the world. But um, oh god, it's been a see now. I feel like it's, it's things that have influenced what? Just who you are, or your as, work? Yeah, you know, just as, who you are, or as a creator. As a creator, yeah, boy. I'd have to. I'd have to say Weird Al because mm-hmm. I just I grew up on him, and uh, and it's just it's you know, like that. That was you know I just listened to him nonstop as a kid, so. There, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. You know, there's no way I'd be anywhere near. I mean, like that was that was, yeah, without yeah. <laughs> that just built everything. You know, that that was my goal. He, he was, you know, and still is. I mean, he's he's still, you know, the king. Oh, right. No yeah, doubt. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Yeah. For me, was it, what for was me. it like working with him for uh, uh, Street Meat? Uh, Mind blowing. It was crazy. I mean, he's he's super cool. Like he's he's totally. I don't know if you've met him, but he's a. Uh, very at easy, you know, just easy going, super nice guy, just very and, and very funny. I mean, like just very, you know, quick and funny, um, but no pretense, just a super cool, just, you know, he's going guy. And, and, uh, he was just he, I, a really hard worker. Like as I know, I know from, you know, from his career, obviously, because he's prolific, but um, yeah, no. He, he came in, and I was like, <laughs> "Wow, we're really doing this, huh? Okay, you know." And I'm, I'm I'm trying to make sure that everything that I normally oh, I know how to run a studio. This is no problem. I'm like, "Okay, okay, which buttons record? Okay, don't mess up. Do not mess up now. Do not mess up. You know, like air on the side of levels being lower because if you blow out a weird out track, I'm gonna kill you. You know, like so. I was very conscious about doing every like it was kind of like a this is the moment you train for. Here we go. I mean, like jump out of a plane. Um, and then he was just great. He just like, you know, to hear the Weird Al voice coming out of Weird Al into yeah. your, you know, into your machine is, is mind blowing. And then, uh, and he was also like, he just did take after take after take after take. Like, he, and he would do it on his own. Like, he, you know, I'd say, uh, he'd say, what do, you, what do you think of that one? I'd be like, that was great. And he's like, you want to do another one? I'm like, ah, he's like, let's just do another one because it's fun. I'm like, okay. So he's like, recorded like, a bunch of takes and kept going. I'm like, man, I can't believe you're working. <laughs> like, yeah. I thought this would just be like walk in front of me and take off. I mean, there's no reason to think that, but you know, you'll think you know, he's going to be that into it. But he was into it. It was really cool. Yeah, it sounds like you, yeah. you you're having a good time on that track. So it's uh, that's cool to hear. Yeah, that that was that was a uh, little little Mikey Furman at 13 thrown out to you know that was like the boomerang wish to the universe. Like, I don't know what the word is. Oh, oh my god! Sitting with my doctor in Midtown. Just had a checkup, he's breaking it down. No more taking the train. Says the doctor me. You gotta walk a lot more. And more importantly, you gotta pay attention to what you eat. Less meat or your heart is gonna cease to beat. If you see a street cart, just keep moving on. Or this time next year, you'll be dead and gone. See me today. Leave me alone, street meat, man. I'm not in the mood. Sorry, dude, but I gotta do nutritious food. It's cool. No, I get it. Hey, man, it's your world. Gotta keep on that diet like a good little girl.
And you've been given the gift of being a superhero, Mike. If you were to choose two superpowers for yourself, what would those be and why? Let's see. Uh, Well, one, I'm going to be so boring. Fly. I I just want to fly. I've always wanted to fly. Um, But I think uh, maybe, see, then I get into, like, the technical, if I could fly. One, and why? Because... A lot of it's impatience. A lot of it's like, I just want to be over there right now. You know, like, I just right. really want to be at the end of that. And like, there's, I can see where I want to be. It's like five blocks down. I want to be right there. I just want to, like, even, I'd even be okay with, like, Hulk jumping it, you know, and just jumping up a crazy high, you know, parabola and landing, you know, five blocks away. But um, let's see, that one. And, and but then I think, okay, I should use the second one to uh, augment you know, or basically I need to, if I can fly, then I need to either be able to not get cold because it's going to be freezing if I go as fast as I want to fly right. or to be super strong. Cause if I hit anything like a bird or something like that, I'm going to, you know, break my arm or something. <laughs> so I think I'd probably have to use, you know, what? I'll go for like super strength so that I don't hit a bird and I'll just wear a jacket. Awesome. Now, do you think you would use these powers for good or for evil? I'll say good. Yes. No, I, I definitely, yeah. I think, uh, I would enjoy going around and uh, helping people. Except for the bird world, where you will be, you know, you wouldn't be hurting birds, you know, with, with, your, with your arm. Right. Yeah, that's right. See, it's an evil to the bird. <laughs> now, who would you feel would be your nemesis? Let's see. I could think of, like, the opposite would be, uh, like, a mole person or somebody who can, like, ah, oh, I can't go down there. Ah. You know, somebody with an underground layer. Um but, um, yeah. Or somebody to kill bees. How about that? How about oh, I'm constantly go. trying to, like, save bees? There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now, a lot of the people I've talked to for this project, they sort of wear their heart on their sleeve as far, the, as, far as their geekiness goes. But is there yeah. anything you secretly mm-hmm. geek out about? I mean, I, I, I yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't, I think I also, like, then, pretty, I'm pretty open about, like, I, I geek out on, uh, you know, Ray Kurzweil type futurism, you know, and just like thinking of, oh man, that's where that's going to be, you know, like, um, um, oh, I geek, I love, that's also, I'm not, I don't really hide it. I was going to say, I geek out on like, I love like waving my hands in front of a, a like a motion detecting faucet and pretending I have the force, and, like opening doors at the <laughs> supermarket and pretending I have the force. Um, because we kind of all do, like that's pretty much, you know, um, but boy, anything secret? Not really. Yeah, I think I kind of just cocaine. Mm, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I think, uh, if I can think of anything, I'll, I'll keep it a secret. Okay, there you go. Um, uh, it's the end of the world. What geeky item mm-hmm. would you choose to save and bring with you as you explore the Mad Max-like terrain? Hmm. I haven't even read it, but I feel like I should get one of those like zombie guides or something like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Like one of those how to build every kind of weapon and stuff like that. That's what I should probably do. Uh, it'd probably be a book, or um, if I can have electronics, like a uh, like a iPad. Is it something I have now, or can I get it? Like, uh, the it can be, down, can I it can be anything you'd like. It? Yeah, maybe you acquire it somehow mm-hmm. through like a, a cage match or something. I've always wanted an Xbox. Maybe I should just take this as a take this as a time to go get an Xbox. There you go. Perfect. No, you I think, have an, I think you need, yeah, you need some, an Xbox. Yeah, that'll because I justify it by saying, "Well, I'm using it to train, to learn how to." Uh, oh, I like a train too, though. Is there a size limit? <laughs> no, no, that would be good though. You would be very popular yeah. in the in the apocalypse yeah. of the train. Yeah, definitely. All right. <laughs> so it's between a train, a book, and the game Edge, <laughs> and an Xbox, and an Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just bring them all? You hey, can, can actually fit everything in there. Can I have mythical things? Yes. Can I have impossible things? Absolutely. Oh, man. That's cool. Um, uh, you know, now it's going to take like a half hour to answer this question. Because <laughs> I want things that can fly and things that can have force fields and stuff. Well, I think, I think if you had the train, you could fit everything you wanted in the train and uh, bring mm-hmm. all your friends along. So I think... Uh, oh, that's great. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, this is the yeah. apocalypse is a, is a is a breeze with you around. Yeah, this isn't so bad. And if the train can leave the planet, 
then this is like an adventure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, it kind of can with the Xbox. So, um, right. here, here we get into some rapid fire questions. Now, reaction okay. time is a fact in this process. So as you can tell attention. by, uh, no, we go ahead. Sorry. No, <laughs> I was just going to say. say. As you can tell by my answers, I usually I'm, my reaction time has a, a little. <laughs> A little bit of a time delay. That's all right. You were in a desert walking along in the sand, and you look down and see a tortoise. You reach down and turn the tortoise on its back, its belly baking in the hot sun. It tries to turn over, but you, it can't without your help. But you're not helping. Why is that? Oh, um, because I am in one of those big uh, those uh, bubbles, the big <laughs> bubble that keeps you from getting germs. <laughs> not that by is my actually... own will, but I got, like, I got tricked into it. I did it as a dare. And now I'm stuck in it. <laughs> that is actually one of the questions from the Void Camp test from Blade Runner. So just, just so. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> oh right. <laughs> I've been, have I been found out, or am I just no? It, too it's, human to it's, be this, cool? That's a relatively new question, so I, I, I'm experimenting with that one. Let's see how it goes. Right. Um, uh, how would you kill a zombie? Uh, oh, uh, cut off its head. There you go. There you go. Marvel mm-hmm. or DC? Uh, we did. Um, um, that's a good question. Uh, DC. Which one, Superman? That's DC. DC. Okay. Superman, I love Superman. DC, Superman. <laughs> In a battle royale, who would win? Hard and firm versus Paul and Storm. The audience. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very good. Uh, another battle royale. Who would win? Hard and firm versus the Vlog Brothers. Versus the vlogbos. Oh God, um, uh, the audience. Nobody. No. Uh, <laughs> no. Everybody would lose. Everybody lose. We all die, and I don't even get a train. Give me just my train. Uh, and regarding your trading card, I like to think mm-hmm. of these cards as editorial-style portraits in cartoon format. Uh-huh. With that in mind. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you'd personally like to say that would help me uh, create the art for your card? Hmm. Well, um, let's see. I know uh, I, I I would uh, be totally fine if it's all over the place because, as you can tell, from, <laughs> I would think from our interview, um, I am pretty all over the place. And uh, I don't really have a trying to think of what it would look like i mean i I don't have a look so i think any like i i've gone back and forth i'm I'm never sure if i should have long hair or short hair and i don't have really any style you know like i don't i just kind of like i just got a t-shirt you know it's for that um so i think i feel like whatever it is it could be i almost picture it being like a you know like a playing card where like the 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 guy who's leaning to the top has short hair and is wearing a t-shirt and the guy who's underneath and aiming <laughs> to the bottom is and has a sword is you know has long hair and thinks he's still listening to uh you know still a heavy metal guy um <laughs> what, yeah. if I, wow. what if i turn you into weird al no i don't know if i should do that no i think <laughs> i think he i think he owns that i i, I try to stay as much as I l- love Weird Al, I don't want it to seem, you know, I don't want, I, I never want it to seem like I'm trying to, like, I'm gunning for him, you know, right, <laughs> you right. know, like, he's he's still the the boss, and I'm, I'm uh, you know, more interested in making my own thing than, than uh, I don't I don't want it to, you know what I mean? I'm yeah, to I, step in there. That's a good that's that's a good thought. I I I'm trying to think of of what. What I could what I could draw you as, okay. but as we are ending the end of the interview here, uh, I have one last question. Any other words of wisdom from Mike Furman? Oh boy, yeah, some words of wisdom. Um, let's see. We can edit this part of me just sitting here and scratching my chin up. <laughs> Can't wait. Uh, I should have. See, I don't do enough interviews. That's the thing. I, I rarely, if ever, do any kind of podcast or interview, so I don't have my, like, I don't know my interview self yet. I have yet to be introduced to my, uh, oh, no, here's what you do, self. Right. Uh, so I didn't see. Words of wisdom. Uh, I would say uh, have some... Get to-